This is Morning Prayers at St. Peter's, Ipswich, brought to you online, a place where we study God's Word together and where we join our hearts and our voices before the throne of God, praying for the needs of our world, our church and ourselves. Welcome this morning. morning and welcome to morning prayers this thursday morning the 10th of october 2024 from st peter's church in ipsley my name is chris mclaren and i am part of the leadership team at the church i will be using some of the outline for morning prayer for thursday from the online version of daily prayer so let us pray O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all, to you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence, and strengthen our hands to do your will that the world may rejoice and give you praise. So blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night is past and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Now there are two psalms set for today, and I'm going to read Psalm 113. The other one is Psalm 115, and it's probably well worth reading that for yourself in your own time. So Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised, both now and evermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is exalt or exalted over all the nations, is glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God? the one who sits enthroned on high, who stoops down to look on the heavens and the earth. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes, with the princes of their people. He settles the barren woman in her home as a happy mother of children. Praise the Lord. And this is the word of the Lord. Amen. This is what they call an acrostic psalm, and the lines begin with the succession of letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And it was one of the psalms said or sung at the Passover meal when Jews remember God, sorry, remember how God brought them out of Egypt under the leadership of Moses. It was customary to sing Psalms 113 to 118, two of them before the meal and the rest after the meal. And they may have even been sung by Jesus and the disciples at the Last Supper. Now the psalm begins in verses 1 to 3 with a threefold call to bless and praise the name of the Lord. As God as he gives and reveals himself. So let me read those three verses again. Praise the Lord. Praise O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised both now and forever. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. So in three verses, we've got one, two, three, four mentions of praising God. It certainly is a time or a psalm of praise. The rest of the psalm brings one main thought. 
and it's a wonder that God so high above all should come down in humility to rescue the lowly and the dis despised. It says, he raises the poor from the dust. It says he lifts the needy from the from the ash heap, that's not easy to say, and he settles a barren woman in her home as a happy mother of children. And these are but some of the ways in which individuals can know and experience the love of God, especially through his son, Jesus Christ. I wonder how we experience the love of God in our lives. Jesus let himself become poor and despised so that he could bring salvation to the people of the world and that includes you and me. So we finish as does the psalm. Praise the Lord. So a prayer. From the rising of the sun to its setting we praise your name O Lord. May your promise to raise the poor from the dust and turn the fortunes of the needy upside down be fulfilled in our time also, as it was in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now our New Testament reading continues with reading from Paul's letter to Philippi, to the Philippians. And we're reading chapter 2, verse 14 to the end of the chapter. So Philippians 2, verse 14 to the end. So Paul writes, Do everything without complaining or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life. In order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labour for nothing. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who takes a genuine interest in your welfare. For everyone looks out for his own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know that Timothy has proved himself. Because as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him as soon as I see how things will go with me. And I am confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. But I think it is necessary to send back to you Epaphroditus, my brother, fellow worker and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you sent to take care of my needs. For he longs for all of you and his distress because you heard he was ill. Indeed, he was ill and almost died. But God had mercy on him, but not on him only, but also on me, to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore, I am all the more eager to send him, so that when you see him again, you may be glad and I may have less anxiety. Welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honour men like him because he almost died for the work of Christ, risking his life to make up for the help you could not give. And again, this is the word of the Lord and thanks be to God. The heading of chapter 2 in my Bible is entitled Joy in Serving. And as we've just read, we can see that Paul especially highlights Timothy and Epaphroditus who served with Paul and the Philippians with joy. In verses 14 to 16, Paul points out the problems that come with people complaining or arguing. 
if all people outside the church can see is the church members arguing, complaining or gossiping, they're going to get a false impression of Christ and the gospel, aren't they? Any church like this needs the unifying power of Christ. Belief in Christ should unite us, not to divide us or alienate us. Our service should bring joy, not only to us, but to those outside the church. Paul then speaks of Timothy and Epaphroditus, two men who have both been a help to Paul in his imprisonment. Epaphroditus, in fact, is only mentioned in Philippians. He had delivered money to Paul from Philippi to help him in his imprisonment in Rome and is now taking Paul's thank you letter back to Philippi. He's a good example of what being a Christian really means. He gives his time and energy to serving others, even when he was ill and almost died. Paul encourages the Philippians to welcome Epaphroditus and to honour him as he deserves. He really was a good example of someone giving joy in serving. And he stands as an example as well as a challenge to us today. How willing are we to serve God by serving others? Something perhaps us to think about. Timothy stands as another example of how to be a Christian, as he had taken a genuine interest in others and their welfare, as we can read in verse 20. He had travelled with Paul on his second missionary journey when the church in Philippi had begun, and he was still interested in them and their lives as Christians. Do we continue to pray and seek to serve others that we may have known earlier in our lives? Timothy sets a good example of this. We may not be able to serve them, but we can still pray for them and perhaps should be doing so. Joy in serving. Timothy, Epaphroditus and of course Paul are good examples of this simple thing to do. Or is it simple? Perhaps it isn't. Times when it's easier than at others. But Paul... Timothy and Epaphroditus took joy in serving others. May we seek to do the same today. And we come now to our time of prayer. I'm going to pause at various times and that will give you time to think of people or situations that fit in the thing I've just said. So let us pray. Sorry, let us pray. Gracious God, we pray for peace, justice, and reconciliation throughout the world. Remembering especially the parts of the world, Lord, where there is war of one kind or another. We pray for the honouring of human rights and for the relief of the oppressed. And we give thanks for all that is gracious in the lives of men, women and children. Gracious God, we now pray for the renewal of the church in faith, love and service. We pray for the Diocese of Worcester with the need for a new bishop. We pray for Bishop Martin who has taken up the thrall as it were for the moment. Give wisdom to those who will appoint the new bishop that they may know whom to send. And Lord we pray too for the life of our church wherever our church is. And we give thanks for the gift of your word, for the grace of the sacraments and the fellowship of your people.
And Lord, we pray for our local community, for all people in their daily life and work. We pray for the young and the elderly, for families and all who are alone. And we give thanks, Lord, for all those who seek to serve others within our community, whether it's within the medical side of things, whether it's in the shops, whether it's as a counsellor, whatever, Lord, we just pray for them that they may do their job wisely and well. And we give thanks for human skill and creativity and all that reveals your loveliness. And Lord, we pray now for those who are in need of one kind or another. We pray for all who bring comfort, care and healing. We give thanks for human love and friendship and for all that enriches our daily lives. Lord, we remember especially those on the list in our daily catch, in our weekly catch, who are ill in one way or another. We pray for them and their families, asking that you would reach out in your love and mercy to heal. And so, Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of our God. Amen. And today, Lord, in the Church of England, we remember especially Paulinus, Bishop of York and a missionary, as well as Thomas Traherne, a poet and spiritual writer. So we pray the collect set for today. God, our Saviour, who sent Paulinus to preach and to baptise and so to build up your church in this land, grant that, inspired by his example, we may tell all the world of your truth, that with him we may receive the reward you prepare for all your faithful servants. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And may the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for being with me this morning. I trust there's something there that God has been able to speak to you about. I've certainly learnt a lot as I've prepared. Look forward to being with you tomorrow. Goodbye and God bless.